Hi people, welcome back. So in this episode, I'll be talking about CFCs, the chlorofluorocarbons. Now before we start, let's have a cup of tea. Wanna join me? Okay. So you know CFCs, right? Uh, where are the sources of these CFCs here? We know that CFC is one of the ozone deplete depleting substances. And the more CFCs there are in the stratosphere, it's, cause, it's going to cause a lowering amount of the ozone layer because it just kills the ozone based on the Chapman mechanism that we'll talk about next time here. So you see that over the years, right, before CFC was manufactured to the point of time where it was produced, made, and increasingly used in the daily life here, we see how the negative correlations with the ozone, right? Now, before the 1960s, there wasn't any CFCs involved. But the ozone remains at the highest point. But subsequently, when we increase in this sigmoidal curve depicted by orange, we notice how the ozone start to go up and down because you know it's a cycle where you have a production of O3, depletion of O2O2, and vice versa. But we can see a trend line that the trend line it goes down, right? And we realize that at a certain point here, the CFC taper it didn't use. What's the reason for that? It's because over the years scientists have researched and come with the result that shows how the CFCs affect the ozone is depleting. So we signed the Montreal Protocol or the country signed the Montreal Protocol some years ago here and minimized the usage of CFC and that's why I see there's a plateau of the CFC and therefore there could be some bouncing back of the production of ozone layer here. So spray cans and refrigerators contains this ozone pardon it contains the CFCs that could damage the ozone layer, right? So the next part really is about to understand the ozone chemistry, right? That was starting to begin in 1974 when the Nobel Prize winner in 1995, uh, Mario Molina and Sherwood Rollins published a widely noted Nature article on the threat to the ozone layer from the CFC, or quite freons, right? Used in the spray bottles. I think I've got one right now over here, okay? This kind of sprays. Oh, it feels very good to have some moisture on my face, but not so good uh, to the atmosphere. So this is also found in spray bottles, like cooling uh, mediums in the fridge, elsewhere um, in plastic forms here, right? Those forms that contains a lot of air. So Molina and Rowlands based their conclusion on two important contributions by the other researchers. They were the James Lovelock Love from England, um, who had developed a high sensitive device for measuring extremely low organic gas content in the atmosphere and the electron capture detector. So in the last episode, we talked about how you know, this device, the spectro spectrophotometer here, uh, are able to detect the amount of the ozone, right? So using this, this you know, um, James could demonstrate the, the, uh, the, you know, the CFC, which is man-made, which is very chemically inert, uh, which is a very good cooling agent, coolant, right? They really spread around the world through the atmosphere. And there's this person called Richard Stalowski. I would like to emphasize Richard Stalowski and Ralph Cicerone from the US. They showed that the free chlorine radicals atoms right in the atmosphere can decompose ozone catalytically, right? In similar way as nitrogen oxides do, because the radicals, radicals are super, super reactive. So I just want to mention this that CFCs non-toxic because they're very inert, very stable here. They are not flammable, so even if they're organic, right, you can't burn them. They don't go to fire, they do not corrode, they don't smell, right? And they can be easily compressed into a liquid. So how good is that? These memory compounds here, and that's why they have been used perpetually over the years here. But since then, right, because scientists found the negative effects of these CFC, so that's why we stopped the usage or slowed down the usage here. On this slide, I would like you to know the difference in the CFC's classification. So you see the CFC 11, CFC 12, CFC 113, 114. What do they mean here, right? So let me look at this chart for you. And we have the formula, this is more chemistry. ODP stands for the ozone depletion potential. And you can formulate a trend line. Now, if you look at the formula here, right? You notice that when a certain particle contains a small number of certain halogens in the in the formula, the ODP ozone division potential will be higher. 
So what is it? Can you see a correlation here? So for instance, you see a CFC 11 here with one fluorine and three chlorine. ODP is one, right? When we do a swap substitution of fluorine for a Cl, it doesn't change, right? But if we have more carbon, right, and we have two chlorines instead of three chlorine here, it drops here. So you can see that it is the number of chlorine that really determines the ozone depletion potential. Then when I ask, okay, what is halon? Halon is uh, another kind of chemical that can use also bromine there. But why, you know, when you have a presence of bromine, the ozone depletion potential becomes even greater. And that's because, you know, when we talk about the bromine radical, there's an even more stable radical than chlorine because of its larger atomic radius that can hold uh, uh, and unpack electrons better, that it can deplete the ozone layer more. So you see that when we replace chlorine with bromine, right, it's going to aggravate the situation here, right? Then you can see the trend line. Now, when we compare halon 1301 compared to 2402, why is it that you know, when we have three fluorine to one carbon compared to like a four, four fluorine to two carbons here, the ODP drops? And that's because you need to look at some chemistry that when CBrF3 decompose into CF3 dot the radical plus Br dot, the CF3 dot radical is stable by the three highly withdrawing, highly electronegative fluorine that could stabilize the dot, the unpacked electron on carbon, and therefore the bromine radical exists. And when Br dot exists, it can propagate and react with the ozone and deplete it. Okay? So some of the acronyms here you see that HCFC stands for the hydrochlorofluorocarbons. HFC is the hydrofluorocarbons, okay, as you see here. Now what do this number mean? Why isn't that like a one one 115, you know, 13 or something like that. It's not about uh, uh, numerical order here. It is, there's some formula associated with that. And I would like to leave it to the next part, right, where we do a granular analysis on how to solve this formula in accordance to the naming of these compounds here. So, see you in a while. Cheers.